I think this is the tree. Oh wow. I was telling I was telling Sylvia that we needed to replace some of the lentils and he was telling me that this tree was ready to go. It's big. Yeah. It's beautiful. We are gonna be opening up some doors in the house so we can get to our bedroom and other various <laughs> things. So we will need uh, some wood lentils that go above the doorways and in some of the windows in a couple of spots. And I want to have an old rustic look to it, but finding old beams that match is very hard and very expensive. I don't really want to buy new beams and then kind of make them look antique because it's not authentic. Uh, so our neighbor told me about these old chestnut trees. These have been dead for a long time. They have the natural cracks. So the plan is to take these down and then I'm thinking hand hew them yeah. um, to somewhat square beams, the, the old fashioned way with just simply a broad ax, which gives it a lot of texture. These are about 20 centimeters in diameter. The look I wanna go for is, like I said, an antique broad ax look, but then with slightly rounded corners, I don't want them to be perfectly square. It's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. Um, we've got one, two, sort of three there this massive one <laughs> that's, that's huge. it's too big for me to handle um but i mean we could have someone take that down and we could make furniture out of it yeah that'd be really cool So I wanted to attempt to answer a common question we get, which is why do we have to go to such lengths to convert this house into a home? Uh, sometimes it's in comparison to other YouTube videos that you guys might see of other people building in Italy who don't have to go through such strict regulations. It primarily has to do with the fact that our house in particular can be allowed to be converted from a barn into a home when most of the stone cabins in the mountains cannot. They can be used as, as baita is the, the Italian word. I'm probably saying that very poorly, which essentially means a, a stone cabin in the mountains. And those types of cabins can can legally only be allowed to be used as a weekend getaway or an occasional vacation. They can't legally be used to live in. And I, I hated the idea of putting in years of our lives into restoring a historic home and then not legally being allowed to live there, not being able to have a, a mailing address, not being able to call it our home or potentially getting in trouble for living there. So I didn't want to take on the traditional baita where the regulations are pretty pretty loose. They're, they're pretty easy to restore. You don't have to put in insulation. You don't have to insulate the roof. You don't have to dig down and do the vaspaya, the crawl space. But because this will be our primary home, we have to go so far and beyond and meet certain regulations that require the house to be a nearly zero energy home. So creating a stone house into a zero en energy home is it's a very difficult task. Um, so that's the reason why we have to put in so much insulation. That's the reason why we have to dig the Vespaya. And it becomes a very difficult task to turn a historic home into a zero energy home while preserving the historical significance of the home and not simply covering it up. Uh, because on a daily basis behind the camera, what we don't show you is we are discussing with engineers perhaps who want to cover the entire house in cement because that's what the, the book says. And we have to fight against that in order to find a common solution that allows us to preserve the beauty of the home exactly how it is 
while also meeting code and the reg regulations that are required. Which, speaking of which, we've been putting off until today a project to uncover some of the historical significance that was covered up. So this should be a, a good break from digging. But I really, I'm excited. I know, I've been saving this. So it's, it's really kind of hard to show on camera, but this is one of the historical features of the property. There is kind of a, you need to know what, the, what they call this. I don't know what it is in Italian or how to translate it, but there's some kind of step here that kind of flares back into the barn and it's since been covered up and we would like to uncover it and have it be a feature of the property. So I think it's really, really cool because what they actually use this for is they would have the hay on their backs when they were climbing up and they would actually put their feet in the middle here to unload the hay. Well, yeah, it'd be more comfortable <laughs> to be open right It's here. open. That's the reason yeah. that there was the space here is so that they could slot in with the, with the hay on their back and then dump it into the room and this is where they would keep all the hay for the animals. Yeah. I think it's really cool and it's really important to me that we can honor that history because it's actually um, only done in this region, right? Yeah, it's pretty pretty specific to this region, something that they're very proud of. And a lot of places what they do is they have very uniquely shaped doors. So you have the square covering the opening, but then you have little slots of wood that go down to cover that. And then the floor, I don't think um, I've ever shown you this, but the floor inside of the barn here would have been on the level of this concrete pad. So oh, okay. where your feet are would have been this floor. They raised, they raised the floor it up, up um, to make it more livable as a house prior to um, us acquiring it. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chisel this out and then turn it into a step. So it won't be completely open all the way to the inside because the floor does step up so we're gonna chisel it back. First, we'll have to remove the whole thing and we'll show you how it was originally. And then later on, we will build out a step to make it more, make it easier to get out. Cause right now it's a pretty big step down. So it'll be a much easier way to get in and out. So we can have the step and we can honor what was here in the, in the beginning. That's about the step height right yeah, there. Yeah, I know. That's cool. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be really neat. That looks perfect. That's, I mean, yeah. Whoa. Oh my goodness. That's cool. That's really cool and it looks like perfectly level. Yeah. <gasps> so I'm assuming that these are probably the original stones that were here, maybe. That's what it looks like to me. Oh my goodness, I love it! Oh, that's gorgeous. That's gonna be so cool. It, 
Yeah. That that looks so much cooler than I thought it would. Oh, I'm so excited about that. That's neat. Let's clean it up. Yeah. You got to get that big stuff. So this is how it's gonna work. We have to, this floor raises up, right? So it's probably gonna be a little less than flush. Maybe a piece of wood. Here we go. A little less than flush. So the the concrete floor will be about here. Okay. So then this is where our new door is going mm -hmm. to go, which raises mm -hmm. the level up flush to the stone. Right. So. So we just like a piece of trim, like well, how you normally would have as a door frame. Yeah, so right this there. will be the finished door trim. So at, this is what you step on mm -hmm. to get out. Yeah. So then we have to build out insulation maybe to here. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is put a small row of stones so it comes out mm -hmm. to here. So this is what's left with mm -hmm. the step. Um, to make it a comfortable step, we'll put... Um, I'll cut out a piece of stone in the exact shape of this thing here. Okay. And we'll set it in to raise this up. Mm -hmm. um, just, I don't know, maybe six or seven centimeters. So it'll be one piece of stone? One oh. single piece of stone, of slate. So it'll be a dark oh, stone. so pretty. Which will contrast against yeah. this. And then what you'll have is a very comfortable, because right now it's too far of a step down yeah. and not far enough from this side. Yeah. So what you'll end Raise up that with up a little bit. is it'll be beautiful and it'll be a very natural step in and out. Is this the height that our, our balcony will be? Uh, I mean, we can make it whatever we want, but yeah, I want it to be the same height. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be really, really That's, nice. It's going to be really cool. I love it. I'm so honestly, excited. Honestly, it looks and works so much cooler than I expected. It's perfect. Yay. So clearly renovating this house is a lot of work and I've had a lot of questions of what could possibly be motivating us, getting us through all of the digging, the underpinning, the, the brutal hard work, not to mention the extra work to, to save the historical significance of this home as we convert it to a house. And you might think it's the the view or something inside the house. Which is all part of it. Sure, of course. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's actually this spot right here, just off our bedroom. We're going to dig out a large section. We're gonna build a beautiful covered patio 
with the most incredible outdoor kitchen. I'm envisioning this long handcrafted wood table with lots of seats that we can host and a brick oven pizza. And I, I just, that's what motivates me. Like whenever I'm needing a minute to like stop the digging, I come out here and I, I look at this spot and I think to the average person, it just looks like a pile of dirt or a hill. Yeah, it doesn't look like much right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have this this vision and we're going to have this beautiful back stone wall against the terrace and it's just going to be incredible and the perfect place to not only host people, but to, uh, I guess, reflect mm -hmm. on our, our journey in, in gratitude. And I want it to be a place of, of gratitude. Absolutely. Which may sound strange, but like to me, when we, when we finish our house, like that's what I want, a, a mm -hmm. place for us to have a cup of coffee and to reflect and to, and to think about, I mean, because we could, when we're finished, we, we could sit back and, and think about, it from a perspective of pride, how much work we put into this and be proud. And yeah. there's there's room for that. Of course. But I think that gratitude is, there's something more powerful because yeah, it, it causes you to be, it forces you to be conscious and to be thankful for the circumstances and people who have brought you to this place. Because yeah. again, we could be prideful of the backbreaking work we put in, but I think it's stronger to be grateful for, for you guys yeah. for watching this, for, uh, in some small way, you guys giving up part of your week yep. is helping fuel us. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without, the without you of really, the, we the wouldn't community. Yeah. So I, I actually want this space to find some kind of representation of that, some visual reminder that brings me back to a place of, of gratitude mm -hmm. and something for decades for us to be um, both proud of and grateful for. And that's what's motivating me. Mm -hmm. I think that particular spot, which will be the heart of the home. It really will. Like there's going to be some amazing features inside, but realistically this outdoor spot is going to be the heart of the home. That's where we're going to spend really the majority of our time, I think. Once I'll, we're I'll come inside to, to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the house, so I'll be inside too, but that's going to be where we spend the majority of our time for sure. Of course, we're going to have a, a very modest kitchen inside, but the real spot for cooking, for me, <laughs> I want to cook outside. So this, this to me is the heart of the home. And going along with a line of being grateful in some representation mm -hmm. of what's brought us here, I think it's only natural to take things kind of a step further for for those who have been supporting us financially mm -hmm. or who want to support us financially. Like I want that visual reminder. So we've been talking for months now and we've decided we want to engrave the names of people who have been supporting us on bricks mm -hmm. for our patio at the heart of our home. Mm -hmm as a way for us to have that visual reminder for decades to come of, of, of you guys who have yeah. supported us. Of and what's really us, brought us here. Yeah. What has really brought us here. So this right here is the brick I believe we've decided to use for the patio. This is solid Italian travertine, which is very quite heavy just for a single brick. But I just envisioned this large patio and the names of the people who have supported us engraved onto here. So we wanna open up, of course, a very limited number of bricks where we can engrave your name on the brick, but then we're also going to set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, FaceTime call or a Zoom call, some kind of video chat where we can get to know each other better and properly thank you for your support. Yeah, and we also have the idea that we want to do a meetup. Actually, we're gonna do two meetups, one in the US and one here in Italy. So that will be fun to to get to know yeah, I think to, we'll get to do know that everyone a little bit better. Probably closer to the time that we're finishing the house yeah. as, a, as a big celebration for the house being finished. Yeah. So all the information can be found on our website or you can check the links in the description below. I think it's such a, a bizarre new world that we're living in that we can create these videos half a world away and share them with you. And, and we do hope that they bring you some value on a weekly basis. Uh, but we both want you to know that we value you being here regardless of whether you financially support us or not. But we wanted to create some kind of program that would properly thank those who, who have. So if that is something you want to join, uh, of course, we, we do appreciate it. But regardless, we, we really value you being here. So thank you so much for watching this week. And we cannot wait to share a new video with you on Sunday.